Good afternoon, basketball fans. Well, it's almost afternoon, and welcome to the Mule Barn at Fairfield Community High School, where it's a Wayne County battle today as the Fairfield Mules get set to host the Wayne City Indians. I'm Randy Olson, courtside, joined by Ron Standard, longtime basketball official who's making his broadcasting debut. How you doing, Ron? I'm doing good. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you're you. excited just to be in person and see some basketball, exactly, aren't you? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. A little bit different oh. perspective for you, though, up here, huh? Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's different this year, that's for sure. Yeah, how many years did you uh, referee basketball? 30. 30 years. 30 years. And uh, you came to this gym many times, I guess. Huh? I have, yeah. The barn, the mule barn. The mule barn, yeah. a great place for basketball, that's yeah. for sure. Any fans give you a hard time here? Uh, yeah, but, you know, Fairfield's been so good down through the years. Uh, of course, this year's different, but big crowds, you know, they could say about anything, and you can't tell what they're saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot different this year with only 50 people in the yeah, gym. Somebody, some, somebody yeah. says something, uh, you're going to know it. If somebody says something today, everybody in the place is going to know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I know you miss the, the uh, refereeing of basketball probably. You probably don't miss the idea of, of refereeing with a mask on. I do you? not. No, I can't even imagine doing yeah. that. Uh. Have you talked to any of your old uh, compadres that uh, you did games yeah, with? And yeah. How and are they getting along with a mask? Uh, just making do, you know, because yeah. uh, these the officials, uh, just, just like the players and the coaches, are just happy to be out here. Right, uh. right. Well, both these teams played last night, and both teams got wins. So they come in here on a high note. The question is, how can they respond – to a late night Friday night game and come back and play at 12 noon. You know, are you still yeah. going to have fresh legs? That's the story. Yeah. What, why, why is this game at noon, Randy? Uh, do you know? I don't know exactly why, uh, other than the fact that they just want to keep the slate clean for the rest of the day. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not really sure as to why it was yeah. set up for 12 noon, but it is a varsity-only game. There's no JV contest today, and that's because the numbers are, are down a little bit for uh, Wayne City on the JV side. But, uh, yeah, both teams winners last night. Wayne City a winner over Weber Township and Fairfield Mules. Remain undefeated on the season. They're 9-0 and as they beat Johnston City handily last night. So both teams coming in uh, on a high note. Yeah, this is a, a county uh, rivalry. Mm -hmm. It is. And uh, glad to see this game being played. Um, of course, Fairfield's got a much larger enrollment, so most years are probably the favorite. But mm -hmm. uh, rich basketball tradition at Wayne City. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that these Wayne City kids uh, – if they were to beat Fairfield, that could make their season. Probably. Well, definitely so, and they did exactly that a couple of years ago. Uh, Fairfield was favored that season, you know, on paper, and uh, Wayne City came in here to the Mule Barn and, and beat the Mules that yeah. year. I'm sure Coach McElravey has not forgotten <laughs> that. In fact, I reminded him of that this morning on the sports couch. He says, oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I guarantee you Wayne City fans haven't uh -huh. forgotten it either. And, again, you know, what that tells you is that, you know, we don't play the games on paper. Exactly. You've you got to be prepared. you got to bring it every day because, you know, you take a look at the Wayne City Indians down there warming up, and they've got nothing to lose. Exactly. So and they can know, come in here and play loosey-goosey. Exactly. And Coach McElravey may have told his team that, you know, exactly that. Uh, hey, you know, this could make their year. They come in here and beat you guys today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they do have some size. I mean, they're formidable opponents. I mean, you've got uh, um, Noah Cooper coming in here at 6'4", at you know, and you got Justin Durham at 6'6". Six, six, so wow. that's some size that you're going to have to contend with. Yeah. And then you got Taj McKinney, the, the speedster, the, uh, the guard for Wayne City, who can – can uh, race down the floor, can jump out of the gym, even though he's only six feet tall. He had 41 points against Norris City the other night. Really? Scored 41 of their 48. Oh, wow. Pretty good game, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good game. So, again, yeah. McKinney can fill it up, and, and the Mules know that. So what year is he, McKinney? McKinney is just a junior. He's okay. been starting for Wayne City All since right. he was a freshman. So he'll be back. He'll be back. That's right. So, uh, again, they're going to have their hands full uh, with him today as well. But um, – the Mules, you know, they, they have depth, and that's the blessing that they have is a lot of depth. They have not only these five yeah. senior starters, but then they've got five guys that they bring off the bench from that JV team that uh, would be playing for a lot of teams in Southern Illinois. Yeah, and so they don't miss much whenever they switch out to the of, second five. A lot of bodies out there. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I'm glad to see these two teams continue to play each other. You know, I think it was a couple years ago that uh, Wayne City had a um, uh, an opening in their – tournament maybe last minute or whatever yeah fairfield took their jv team over there so they could have they a did. 16 team field they did yeah and it was nice that they did that mm -hmm. so 
All right. Well, we're going to let you meet some of our sponsors. We'll be back with all the starting lineups and the play-by-play from the Mule Barn in just a moment. Whether you're being cautious by staying close to home or life has just been a little too busy, you can still take advantage of the unique products and services we've designed with you in mind. You can now open and apply for a variety of checking accounts online and receive the benefits that come along with them, including high interest or cash back with a Moolah account, protection beyond your bank account with Secure Plus, online and mobile banking, and local customer and community service. Simply visit us at fnbcommunitybank.com. FNB, banking, business, life. Member FDIC. Do your best friend a favor. Take them to Jagger's Doggy Day Care in Mount Vernon. One stop for dog boarding. Don't leave them home alone or trust them with someone you don't even trust. Pamper them with the Doggy Day Care. They do grooming, training, and your doggy will love the sweet treats dog barkery. <clears throat> a bakery. Spoiling your pooch seven days a week. Jagger's Doggy Day Care. Dog grooming, training, and boarding. 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. Find them on Facebook or at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. Do you enjoy local sports talk? Well, then you don't want to miss the Sports Couch every Saturday morning at 8.30 on Super Hits AM 1210 and areasports.net. The Sports Couch is 90 minutes of great local sports talk where we visit with area coaches and other local media covering the sports in our area. You never know who's going to be on the couch. So join us for the Sports Couch Saturday morning at 8.30 on Super Hits AM 1210 and on areasports.net. And what a show we had this morning. We had six coaches on the show. Uh, you probably know all six of them and probably have refereed a lot of games for many of them. Uh, in fact, we had Joe Hosman of Massac yeah. County on the show with us this morning. Know Joe real well. Yeah. Run into him at the uh, El Dorado Hall. Sure. Whatever year. We talked he's he's undefeated this he's year. He's undefeated this year, and he's coaching his son. His son is yeah. point guard. Yeah, I think this is the last of a whole bunch of Hosman boys. Well, and some people say they've saved the best for last. I've he's heard a that. pretty good player. So. Yeah, I saw a a photo of him he does not uh-huh. he's not got the body of a freshman no no he's uh he's pretty well put together and, okay. and he uh funny story last night in their game he tied his older brother's record for assist in a game yeah and joe took him out of the game <laughs> and he was <laughs> mad at, he's mad at his dad because he wouldn't let him beat it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i wonder how that ride home went he'll have oh, as a freshman though he'll have plenty of chances to uh, yeah. to beat that record but i just thought that was funny yeah but but it may happen again if joe's aware of it it'd take him out again he <laughs> if he, he's he, way ahead or something he might i don't know what else had uh, rob flanagan of the Olney tigers on the show with us this morning you know coach flanagan i do and of course uh Mount Mount Vernon, boy yeah. yep yep and uh great conversation with rob this morning his son is actually playing basketball over in Indiana at Sullivan Indiana High School because, well, quite frankly, Coach Flanagan was like most of us, didn't think we'd ever have a season. Wow. And his son's a senior, so he sent him over there to, to play at Sullivan, and he is playing over there. And over in Indiana, they're get to, getting to play without a mask. They have postseason, too? Postseason, post-season too. They're post-season. starting postseason next week, but they're playing without a mask, yeah. and they have full gyms. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, well, if any place was going to do it, it would be the state of Indiana. So They'd be the last one to give up their basketball. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably right, the Hoosiers, yeah. That's right. But, uh, yeah, great conversation with Flanagan this morning. And, again, here his son is playing over in Indiana, but yet he's coaching the Olney team and, and making the, the most of the situation. He's been there a long time, hasn't he, Rob? He and has. Olney. He's yeah. been in Olney a long time and had a lot of success over there. Yeah. So Did he start out at Sisney, I think? He started out at Sisney. I think he yeah. was at Sisney for four years, yeah, with the running Lions. That's right. So, uh, anyway, those were two of the six guests we had on the show this morning. Of course, Coach Mac Arabia Fairfield was on with us. Coach Fahrenbacher of Salem was on with us. Uh, again, you can check that whole show out in archive on our uh, website here at areasports.net. Teams are starting to uh, finish their warm-ups here and getting ready to come back and, and uh, have the uh, starting lineups and the play-by-play. The Indians are going to be wearing their uh, travel red uniforms. I've got them black on the scoreboard because they're the uh, the visitors. So, but you can read Indians and Mules on there. So I think at home, you folks will will know who we mean on the scoreboard. We're going to take another brief time out. Back with more in just a moment. While our lives have changed dramatically, it has not changed Banterra's commitment to serve you. Our team continues to provide you with unmatched service and top-rated digital banking. We've partnered with the American Red Cross to host blood donation events, and we're offering financial solutions for customers, including small business funding. Plus, we're ready to put people back to work. We're growing and have jobs available for those who want to support our region because we're more than a bank. Banterra, your partners for life.
Our national anthem here at the Mule Barn in Fairfield. Again, no JV contest today. It's varsity only between the Wayne City Indians and the Fairfield Mules. And we're going to meet the starting lineups right now. We'll follow along with the public address announcer. Justin Durham, first to be introduced for the Wayne City Indians. He is number 34. He's a 6'6 sophomore. Had an older brother that graduated last year from Wayne City. He was a pretty good player. There's number five, Taj McKinney. Again, he had 41 points in their win for their game against NCOE the other night. Number 21 is Grant Lewis. Grant is a 6'1 sophomore. Number 24 is Jarrett Lewis. He is a 6-foot uh, senior. And Noah Cooper, number 32, is the other starter. And he is a 6'4 senior. Noah McElravey, first to be introduced for the Mules. Of course, he's a 5'11 senior guard. All five starters for Fairfield are seniors. Been the same starting lineup all year. Brandon Lane, number 12, is a 6'4 senior. Colin Massey, number 14, 5'10 senior. Blake Pruitt, number 22, a 5'9 senior. And riding out the starting five for the Mules is Landon Zolini. He's number 24, a 6'4 senior. And uh, as we've said on the last couple of broadcasts, we just recently went over the 1,000-point mark for his career. He did that the other night in their win at Flora. The Mules are 9-0 on the season. They probably... Um had some postseason aspirations too, Randy, this year, this Fairfield team. Oh, definitely so, and it's a shame that uh, that they're not going to be able to play postseason this year because you you just you just don't know how how far they could go. No jump ball. We've laughed about this, talked about this. <laughs> don't understand why they don't have a jump ball as a referee. You don't even understand why they have a jump ball. We can jump against each other all yeah. during the game, but boy, don't let everybody gather in a circle and throw the ball up. Whatever you do. So uh, <laughs> Wayne City gets the ball first, and we are underway. Tash McKinney has it, almost taken away from him. That's the thing about McKinney is you got to try to stop him from driving in the lane because he uh, makes a living taking the ball to the hole in the lane. With it out there is Grant Lewis. Lewis gives it back to McKinney. McKinney's cut off again as two mules come over to stop his progress. Good job there. Jarrett Lewis back over to McKinney. Yeah, he's, uh, he's so fast on that first step, and he can jump out of the gym, too. They go inside to Cooper. He spins on his man, goes up the shot, misses it. Rebound by the Mules. And you see how the defense collapsed that time? Good uh, help defense there by Fairfield. Here's Noah McElravey with it out to Pruitt. Over on the right side to Massey. Inside the lane to Brandon Lane, and he's going to be fouled before he can go up for the shot. Going to go against Wayne City. Let's check who that's on. Goes on Newell Cooper, his first, first team foul. They're going to send uh, Lane to the line to shoot a pair. I wasn't really sure he was in the act of shooting, but he said he <laughs> was. So. What would you have called there, ref? Uh, I don't know, man. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. easy, that's an easy answer when you've been out of it for two years, right? Uh, 30 years this guy beside me <laughs> refereed basketball games, including uh, several here in the Mule Barn. So. Yeah, and then every time you go watch a game, that's what you get. What would you have done there? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So you got a whole new perspective on basketball <laughs> today, don't you, from my vantage point. Shot from the corner by Lewis won't go. Rebound by the Indians and taken away by Pruitt for the Mules. He's going to throw it ahead to McElravey. McElravey out to Zerlini, and the shot won't go. And they get the offensive rebound and reset the offense. Zerlini down low. Little baseline shot. Nope, won't go. And rebound Jarrett Lewis for the Indians. Back to Taz McKinney. To Lewis again. Lewis gives it to uh, the other Lewis. We got uh, Jarrett and Grant out there, and there's a bucket for a three by Jarrett Lewis. And the Indians are on the board here. They lead it 3 2. Skip pass over to Colin Massey. Skip pass back to McElravey. He'll fire the three, and it won't go. Rebound Lewis for the Indians. 6.06 to play here, first quarter. Wayne City not in any hurry. There's McKinney trying to elevate for the shot, had it partially blocked, and the Mules come away with it. They throw it ahead to Zerlini. He's cut off on the baseline. They come back out to Massey. He'll fire one top of the key and connects. 
Puts the Mules ahead, 5-3. Good ball movement that time by Fairfield, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Here comes some full court pressure defense. Let's see how the Indians break it. They do. McKinney takes it all the way down, initiates contact, and they're going to call a foul on the Mules, but I think it's going to be before the shot. The shot did go in, but they're not going to count the bucket. It'll be out of bounds on the baseline. So who was the foul on the red? The foul was, was on um, number 12. Okay. Here's the inbound. Mules have it. Yeah, fouls on Brandon Lane. Okay. Yeah, it's first. Tash McKinney with it out there. Goes inside to Lewis, almost too far. Back over to the other Lewis, and he drains it from the corner. And so far, some hot shooting here by the Indians as they have connected on two three-pointers and lead it 6-5. to five. Fairfield back in the front court with Colin Massey over to Serlini. Back to Massey. He'll fire away. Rattles in and out, no good. Noah Cooper with the rebound for Wayne City. Out to McKinney. In the corner to Grant Lewis. Down low. Yeah, good he goes to Jarrett Lewis and uh, turnover back to the Mules. And there's our mask timeout at 4.42 to go here in the first quarter. We'll be back with more from Fairfield in just a moment. In today's environment, being able to do all of your banking from home is not only convenient, but a necessity. People's National Bank makes it easy for you to do your banking without actually going to the bank. From online banking, mobile banking, free mobile deposit, to transferring funds and paying bills, it's easy and convenient for you to do your banking all from your mobile phone or computer. Get started by going to peoplesnationalbank.com to sign up for online banking today. People's National Bank, making it easy to bank from anywhere. Member FDIC. Back here at the Mule Barn, so far we have um, we have Wayne City holding their own against Fairfield after hitting those two three-pointers, Ron. Yeah, same uh, same player for Wayne City has got uh, both their three-pointers. Lewis Jarrett. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you got two Lewis's about? out there, Jarrett Lewis and Grant Lewis, as we come out back from the timeout. Yeah, that's something that you didn't have to worry about when you officiated, Ron, was uh, mask timeouts. <laughs> Aren't you glad? No. Who would have thought we'd yeah. ever see such a thing? Yeah. Definitely a, a different kind of year, that's for sure. In the corner, here's Blake Pruitt. It won't go. And rebound Noah Cooper for the Indians, and he slaps it, and the ball goes out of bounds. Tried to tip it to a teammate, but went out of bounds. Yeah. Turnover back to Fairfield. Here he comes into Pruitt, now over to McElravey. Thought about a shot, now Massey has it. He's cut off, they skip it over to McElravey. He ball fakes, goes up for the little runner and scores off the window. Puts some mules back in front, seven to six. We've had uh, three lead changes so far. Here's Tash McKinney, that's how fast he is. Yeah, nice move. You got to stay in front of him. He is unbelievably quick. One of the fastest like the, guards you'll see in Southern Illinois. Like the Euro step there. Yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, discussion we could talk about <laughs> all day, especially there's, for a former there's, referee. There's another one. Taj McKinney again, and this time it's a charge. Yeah. So when the Euro step came in to play or into vogue, I guess here in Southern Illinois, you were still officiating because you've been out of it for a couple of years. How did you uh, adjust to that? I'll I tell thing? you what. Uh, a lot of people think block charge is the hardest call to make, but I think traveling is the hardest call to get right in basketball. Because of the Euro step thing now? That's part of it, big yep. part of it. Yep. Zerlini for the long three, and he is fouled, and he will go to the charity strap to shoot three. Ron Stannert joining me on the broadcast today. Longtime basketball official, 30 years in Southern Illinois. He said he wanted to see the Mules play, and so here he is making his broadcasting debut with me, and we're having fun, aren't we, Ron? Oh, yeah, it's a blast. Yeah. You uh, recently had hip replacement surgery, which is part of the reason why you gave up officiating, and how are you doing with that? Yeah, it's doing well. Good. Doing well. Good. Yeah, I had that two years ago, and uh, doing great. Great. First two free throws are good by Zerlini. Put the Mules back in front. 
He'll have one more. And he just drained them all. Another timeout yeah, on the court. Three. We'll just keep it right here this time. So what are you seeing so far? What do you think from this perspective? A little bit different than down under the floor wearing stripes. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good spot to watch a basketball game up here. I think you can see more up here than you can down on the floor. Well, court. you might be able to call the game better <laughs> uh, referee-wise from well, up here, huh? Everybody always told me that. Yeah, well, you the know? fans always told you that yeah, they could exactly. see it. Exactly, and I finally just admitted yeah. it. I said, yeah. 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 Why didn't you see that, ref? <laughs> Why didn't you see that? I saw it up here. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and sometimes they probably did. Yeah, sometimes they have a much better angle yeah. if you're sitting up high, no doubt. Yeah. So you uh, said uh, a moment ago that you thought that the traveling call was actually the toughest call in basketball instead of the, the, the charge uh, call. I, I believe that, yeah. Charge block I mean, call. You, you just got, as, a, as an official, you got to immediately determine which uh, which foot's the pivot foot. Mm -hmm. And, and you just have a split second to do it. Yeah, yeah, take it from there. Yeah. How come we don't see three seconds in lane hardly called anymore? Why did that kind of go by the wayside? What happened? Was that a was that any kind of a mandate that was? No mandate. Okay. I mean, I, I tell you what, but the way the game is played today, if, if both teams are running their offense correctly, you're probably rarely going to see that unless someone gets trapped okay. in the three-second lane with the basketball and can't get out of there or can't pass out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much movement, you yeah. know, in the offense that, that really no one should be in there for three seconds. Did you make that call very often late in your career? No. No. Okay. No. Pro uh, hardly ever a three-second call. Okay. All right. Because, like I said, I mean, you got to get you pretty much got to be trapped in there to get uh, yeah to get that three-second call. Violation. And of course, when somebody yells it loud enough for everybody to hear it, then you hate. The well, well, yeah, that's uh, th <laughs> and I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. A coach will say three seconds, three yeah. seconds, and then the official will blow his whistle. So, right. backdoor I mean, cut is taken away. But retrieved again by the Mules. Pruitt has it, dishes it to McElravey. He'll elevate for the jumper, and it's short. And Indians crash the boards that time, and Taj McKinney comes out on the dribble. Takes it down the lane, dishes it in the corner to Lewis. Another three on the way, and that one's in and out. Noah Cooper with the rebound has it stripped by McElravey as he reached in there to save what would have been an easy bucket. Yeah. What, what is Wayne City's record? I don't have it in front of me, but I think they are about four and three. Oh, really? But I don't have it in front of me. They, they look pretty solid to me for small. That's blocked by Zerlini. For a small school. Oh, yeah. They're, they've got some talent on this team. Now, they had uh, some people out for a while due to uh, illness and some other extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. But uh, when they've got their full package like they do today, uh, they're a formidable opponent. Tash McKinney makes contact in the lane. Nothing called. It's out to Lewis. Lewis will stop and pop. Missed it. And there's Zerlini with the rebound. That was a good box out that time by Zerlini as he uh, was in front of McKinney for that weak side rebound. Here's Brandon Lane on the weak side. Won't go. Rebound Noah Cooper this time for Wayne City. Yeah, I think uh, with the size that Wayne City has, along with McKinney as the speedster out there, I think that they can actually make some noise in the Midland Trail this year. Absolutely. They have yet to play Woodlawn, but they are unbeaten in the Midland Trail so far. McKinney misses on the shot. Here's McElravey in the corner to Pruitt. He's cut off on the baseline. Back to McElravey from the volleyball line. Nothing but net. Yeah, Woodlawn's dominated that conference for years. They sure have. Tash McKinney all the way down again. And again, nobody stopped him. 13 to 10. Mules back on the attack quickly. They go down low, Brandon Lane. Lane is double teamed and he's going to be fouled right underneath the basket. Yeah, Woodlawn stubbed their toe a few times this year, though I think they've lost three so far. So if uh, there was ever a year that Wayne City was going to have a chance to, to beat them, this might be the year. Yeah. Perhaps. Should have a shot. I've not seen Woodlawn play, but uh, I mean, uh, formidable opponent today in Fairfield, mm -hmm. but, but Wayne City for, for 1A school looks pretty salty to me. Camden Robbins takes the inbound and is fouled in there by Justin Durham. Checking in the game are uh, many of the JV players for the for the uh, Mules. That they are always the immediate subs off the bench. As you've got uh, Noah Barger out there, Camden Robbins, who's at the line right now, also Eric Rogers, number 20, right in front of us. As free throw is good there. 
by Robbins. Zerlini stays on the floor, and also uh, McElravey stays on the floor. So three subs in there for Fairfield as that free throw is good too. And so far the mules are uh, red hot from the charity stripe. Yeah, I had missed one yet. I'm, uh, I just jinxed them. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. 15 to 10 our score. And again, it's an over and back that time as good call. Wayne City's having a little trouble getting the ball across the line. 69 seconds to play here in the first quarter. McElravey controls it for the mules. McElravey with a long three, and they're going to leave him open. He's going to shoot it. Yeah, he's wide open. That's two in a row that they've left him open on, and he's made them pay. Eight-point Mules lead, largest of the game. Fairfield in a zone right now. Here's McKinney taking it right between the defenders and scoring. I don't think the zone's going to stop him. <laughs> he likes to take it to the hole, doesn't he? He's going to have to get in front of him. Here's the three-pointer by Barger. Won't go. Rebound McElravey. Takes it in the paint, has it deflected. Back out. Zerlini for three, yes. Mules filling it up from behind the arc here in this second quarter, or this first quarter, tail end of the first quarter. We're down to 18 seconds left. Nine point lead and we've got a uh, whistle and a foul. It's gonna be against the Mules. Checking in for Fairfield number 32 is Dylan Best. Also back in is Colin Massey. He'll replace Zerlini and McElravey. Okay. Fouls on Eric Rogers, Randy. Yeah, okay, that's his first. 15 seconds left, and it looks like uh, Tash McKinney's going to hold it for one shot here. In the corner, they go to Lewis. And it's a steal. Rogers with a long bomb, and he got close to it from the half line, but it wouldn't quite go. And after one quarter play, it's Fairfield 21 and Wayne City 12. And we will come back with second quarter action from the Mule Barn in just a moment. At Hamilton Memorial Family Clinics, your family's care team is close to home. But it's not just about convenience. It's compassionate, quality care. From routine care, vaccines, and DOT physicals to acute needs like disease management, x-ray, and lab work. Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics in Carmine and McLeansboro have you covered. Plus, same-day appointments are available and a Carmine walk-in clinic on Saturdays for those unexpected illnesses. With six providers and eight specialty care clinics, maybe it's time to take another look at Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics. Clinics. See the uh, Fairfield cheerleaders on the floor. Only recently have they allowed that to start happening because uh, through most of Southern Illinois, cheerleaders have not been allowed on the playing surface. I know they haven't been able to do that in Mount Vernon yet. So, um, yeah, you know, they're getting a little bit more lenient with some of these rules that we have. So the girls are on the stage, right? And they they come are down on the stage, and, and yeah, right. During mm -hmm. the play, during yeah. the play. Yeah. All right. Second quarter action here. What did you think of that first quarter with the Mules leading it by nine, bro? Uh, again, I, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's a tough task for Wayne City, again, because they're playing a, a 2A school that's one of the better 2A schools in the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, Team with a lot of depth but, and a lot of ball yeah, movement. But, right? it, I mean, you know, they're going to have to shoot a really high percentage to, to hang around. Fairfield uh, hit some big shots there down the stretch in that second quarter. Hit several threes. His ball's thrown away, intended for Dylan Best. The turnover will give it to the Indians. Yeah, with the depth that Fairfield has, they have a tendency to just wear you down. So by the time it gets to the fourth quarter, you just don't have any legs left compared to the fresh bodies that they've got out there. As they go into that zone trap, and there's a steal by the Mules. Massey comes away with it. Over for the three-pointer by uh, McGuire Taylor. It won't go. It's Taylor checked in here to start the quarter. Wayne City with it again, another steal. Here's a head throw to Rogers, and she's going to lay it up and in. Nice steal and looking up the court there by the Mules. Good court awareness. Find your teammate. Looking at that uh, zone trap again. The Indians struggling with it a little bit right now, trying to get into their offense. There's a trap in the corner. Lewis is in trouble and he has it taken away from him. Dylan Best has it. Back out it comes, three ball look again, and it won't go by Rogers. Rebound by Wayne City. Ahead they get it to McKinney. McKinney in the corner to Lewis, missed it. Rebounded by McGuire-Taylor. 
The Fairfield guards also rebound well, you know. That's an added plus as Dylan Best misses the shot. Rebounded in there by Noah Cooper that time for the Indians. Out to McKinney. 6-17 to play here in the half. McKinney tries to penetrate and he's going to be fouled. And fresh bodies coming in for Fairfield as Zerlini comes back in along with Lane, along with Pruitt, as well as uh, McElravey. Yeah, probably going to play a lot of people today since they both played last night. Not, yeah. Not much uh, time turnover. So it's new right. start. And Wayne City doesn't have that kind of depth. Right. They doesn't have that luxury to be able to run that many bodies in there. Here's a long three uh, by McKinney won't go. That's an NBA three. That was a long one for sure. <laughs> But that's Fairfield's defense pushing them out there. Yep, they're doing a good job. Time out on the court as I think Wayne City's going to try to look for some adjustments here. And uh, while they do that, we'll take time out and be back with more in just a moment at the Mule Barn. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods has you covered with fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled for your grill or camper, Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods can do it. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through their website at WayneWhitePropane.com. And don't forget, they also sell propane grills, smokers, and deep fryers at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. Back at the Mule Barn, Randy Olson along with Ron Stannard. We're in the second quarter, Fairfield leading at 23-12. to We've seen them uh, go man-to-man. -man. We've seen them do the zone trap which has resulted in some turnovers and some points for the Mules. And as I mentioned earlier, even the Fairfield guards rebound the ball well. They do, and that, that zone trap is really doing exactly what it's designed to do, turnovers and uh, fast break at the other end. You used to always referee a lot at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament. What were some other tournaments that uh, you went to, Ron? Uh, Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament. Mm -hmm. Done the Breeze Modern Day Holiday Tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, a lot of turkey tournaments, mm -hmm. midwinter tournaments. Yeah. You know, that Breeze Modern Day Tournament is an interesting one, and I've always liked that tournament, although I've only attended it on a couple of occasions. I never had an opportunity to broadcast any games there at Breeze. always wanted to, but uh, didn't have the chance to just because of the way the days fell in yeah. conjunction with other tournaments. Yeah, good basketball played over there. Yeah. A lot of tall, lengthy teams every year, it seems like. Yeah, there's a feed inside to Brandon Lane and a good pass from Zerlini to give him the assist. Wheels go up 25-12. Yeah, that's a, a very, very competitive holiday tournament, and that uh, format they play, that round-robin format, is, uh, is brutal, isn't it? Yeah. Taking it to the hole was Justin Durham, and a foul's going to be called on the Mules. And uh, Durham comes up a little bit gimpy there, and I think he's going to go off the floor. Looks like he might have rolled an ankle or something. That's not good. And I think uh, Habermas is going to come in to replace him. Yeah, and he's actually going to go to the line to shoot. Uh, no, no, that's Lucas No. I'm sorry. Lucas No is coming off the, off the bench, the 6'3 junior. He'll come right off the bench cold and shoot a free throw. That's kind of tough. Missed the first one. This Durham's over there uh, holding his ankle uh, next to Coach Jake Talbert. Talbert, the interim coach for the remainder of the year as – Head coach Jim Corona uh, resigned on Tuesday of this week. Free throw is good, 25-13. Mules back in the front court. Here's the alley-oop, and, oh, almost a flush by Zerlini. Couldn't quite get it down. It was there, but he couldn't quite complete it. Good luck, though, and a great pass. The Indians with the rebound. Going to be out of bounds right in front of the Mules bench. And timeout on the court again. This might be the mask timeout this time, I believe. Yeah, could be. Yeah, all right. Back with more from the Mule Barn in just a moment. Carter Turf and Tractor is now open in their beautiful new location on West Main Street in Fairfield in the former save -a building. Carter Turf and Tractor is your area dealer for high-quality Kubota tractors in a variety of sizes, perfect for a landscaping business or to easily handle a variety of jobs around your home or farm. They can customize a solution for your needs. They also have the Kubota RTV utility vehicles for on-road and off-road transportation and hauling needs. 
When there's mowing or lawn work to be done, Carter Turf and Tractor has you covered with Exmark riding mowers and walk-behind mowers. They also feature a good selection of Echo brand brush cutters, trimmers, and chainsaws, as well as Honda and Generac generators. Come in and see for yourself at the new Carter Turf and Tractor, open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday and 8 to 2 on Saturday. Back at the Mule Barn, Randy Olson along with Ron Stannard, longtime basketball official, helping us out today, making his broadcasting debut here on areasports.net. And uh, you mentioned that you um, yeah. did the El Dorado Tournament, of course, did Cesar Valera Tournament, used to do the Breeze Modern Day Tournament. So many, any other ones? Did you ever do, do the Centralia Tournament? Do any games there? I work games, uh, games at Centralia, but not the Centralia Tournament. Okay. No. All right. Okay. And a lot of times you guys would um, would do one tournament game at one tournament in the morning and then yes. go and do another one in the yeah. evening, right? A lot of that going on because there's just not enough officials to yeah. get all that basketball covered. Yeah. Lewis buries one from the left corner pocket. He's got three threes. Yeah. Jared Lewis dialing long distance for the Indians. And on the other end, there's McElravey answering right back. 28-16. Team's trading three-pointers here in the second quarter. Yeah, you talk about the shortage of officials, and that was, again, a few years ago when you were still refereeing. Look at it this year. They're yeah. really having a problem this yeah. year. Uh, and, you know, we're playing a lot of games on Mondays and Wednesdays <laughs> and Thursdays and stuff, too. Yeah, and Saturdays at noon. Yeah, and Saturday <laughs> at noon. Here we are, yeah. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. You know. I'm just glad we're playing, obviously. Uh, but I thought that um, – yeah, I, I, I can't imagine when I was senior in high school if they had told me we're not playing basketball this year. I just, Would have been weird, huh? Oh, man. Noah Cooper muscles it up and is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Cooper, a 6'4 senior. And was that on Zerlini? Uh, 24. Yep. Yes. His first. Team fouls are even at one apiece now as the free throw rolls in there by Cooper. Yeah, no JV contest today, just the single varsity game. And he rolls the second one in. Then I'm headed over to Mount Vernon to uh, see the Rams and uh, Belleville Altoff play later on tonight. South 7 Conference action. Rams having a great season. Three pointer. By Colin Massey. Mules continue the hot shooting here. Yeah, Mount Vernon's another team could have made some noise in the postseason, maybe in 3A. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, first year coach Tim Holloway doing a great job. Of course, he was a, a tremendous athlete and player himself there at Mount Vernon, member of the Mount Vernon High School Sports Hall of Fame. As Noah goes up for the shot, left it just a little bit strong, but it was a nice up and under move. Fairfield back on the attack. Here's Pruitt. Two's to uh, McElravey, he'll dribble back around and reset the offense. Brandon Lane steps out, takes a three, misses it. Cooper with the rebound. Out to Taj McKinney. Well, I'm not keeping rebound, but Cooper's got a ton of them. He does, and there's McKinney a little too strong. Jarrett Lewis picks up the rock, fires it, won't go. And ball goes out, nope, saved from going out of bounds by Zerlini. The Indians have it. Over it comes to Lewis. That's Grant Lewis, misses the shot. And rebound this time by Zerlini, and he'll bring it up for the Mules. Here's Brandon Lane. Jump step in and out on the shot. That's probably the most shots Wayne said he's had in one possession. They got to get those to fall. You're right. They're going to hang around. You're right. They had several offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities. Here's Jarrett Lewis, no good. Weak side rebound by Pruitt. Outlet pass it comes to Massey, back to Pruitt. Zerlini for three, yes, nothing but net. 34-18, 2 9 left here in the second quarter. You know, this Fairfield bunch has played together for so long, Ron, and that really makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, they've got some athletes out there and some basketball players. Taj McKinney for three. NBA three. That was way out there. 34-21. Well, and <laughs> Zerlini. So the NBA three. Trying yeah. to top him. Yeah, that was uh, trying to match him tit for yeah. tat there. You go 23 feet, I'll go 24. Yeah, it was close. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh. McElravey. 
You know, I was jo joking, Coach McElroy, the other night. They had uh, 11 or 12 threes in a game. I said, well, what's the school record for uh, threes in a game? He said, well, believe it or not, that's not it. He said, that was a lot, but that's still not it. He said, we've had more than that before. So, uh, lead pass to Zerlini. He misses the shot. Noah Cooper with the rebound. Another rebound for Cooper. Outlet to McKinney. In the corner, Lewis. Short. Tip back up by Grant Lewis. Won't go. Rebound by the Mules. One minute to go here in the first half. Here's McElravy. Another three. Oh, he's got five threes, Randy. That is a lot of threes going down here in the first half. 45 seconds left. Mules in a zone right now. As uh, Lucas Noe had it slapped, and the foul is going to be called on Colin Massey, I believe. Yep. Checking in the ball game for Wayne City. Uh, making his first appearance is uh, Landon Ivey. He's a 6'2 junior. Taj McKinney with it. Had it slapped away by Massey. Here's Jarrett Lewis in the corner. He's going to put one up in the baseline. Too strong. Pruitt with the rebound, and he's going to be fouled by uh, Jarrett Lewis. Might have been a little bit of a frustration exactly. foul there. Exactly. Yeah. I bet you saw a lot of those frustration fouls yeah. when you were officiating. Yeah, you? It, it happened. Yeah, guys get frustrated. They miss a shot or they miss out on a <laughs> rebound, and then they go sw sw yeah. swipe at it. Yeah. You got to ring them up, don't you? Yeah. yeah. 12 seconds left here in the first half. Mules with a lot of threes. We'll tell you exactly how many when we get to the halftime stats with Ron in a moment. Probably hear that huge crowd clapping in the background. Yeah. <coughs> they wave that one off. That was made by McElravey, but it was after the horn. Well, that one does not count. We've come to <laughs> halftime, and it's all Mules here so far. Fairfield 40 and Wayne City 21. And we'll come back and take a look at the first half stats for you in just a moment. <laughs> Vaughn Equipment is a family-owned and operated business in Fairfield that's committed to providing quality equipment to the farm, construction, tractor-trailer, marine, and oil field industries. They feature a great selection of new and pre-owned trucks, trailers, farm equipment, construction equipment, and rental equipment. Their inventory changes weekly, and you can see it all in person or on their website. Whatever you're looking for to do the job right, Vaughn Equipment can help you. They're located at 1102 South 1st Street in Fairfield, or call 842-3500. Back here at the Mule Barn, Randy Olson along with Ron Stannard. You see the halftime score, Fairfield leading it over Wayne City, 40-21. to 21. Ron, uh, what do you think of that first half, and how's it look statistically? Um, Mule's hot from Wayne, behind the arc uh, and uh, hot at the free throw uh, line. That's just they? what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, you got one, two, five. Two, oh, my goodness. You got nine three-pointers mm. made already in the first half. By Fairfield, they are seven of seven from the free throw line. So that's pretty good. That'll make Coach that's, Mack happy. Uh, that's, the, I mean, a tall enough task as it is. Wayne City coming in here, but then Fairfield shooting the ball like that. Yeah, nine three pointers uh, in the first half and yeah. seven out of seven from the line. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, how about Wayne City? What's going on, on their side? You got McKinney doing pretty McKinney well. McKinney has got nine of their uh, mm -hmm. twenty-one points. Well, uh, Jarrett Lewis has nine. So mm -hmm. so those two players have got eighteen of uh, Wayne City's twenty-one points. So four three-pointers yeah, by yeah, Wayne yeah. City. So nine by Fairfield, four by Wayne City. We had 13, 13 three-pointers here in the first half. 13. Uh, Wayne City's three out of four from mm -hmm. the free-throw line, so they're shooting well from there. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah. Too many turnovers, though, for Wayne City, and, and credit the yeah. Fairfield defense for that, the right. trap and – Right. And jump in the passing lanes the way they do. And, and Wayne, Wayne City's getting some open shots. They've just not made enough of them to make this game closer mm -hmm. than what it is. Mm -hmm. 
You mentioned uh, the big Noah Cooper doing a good job on the boards for Wayne City. And he is. He's kept them in the game by uh, getting a lot of rebounds. He has. He's got uh, – I mean, he's held Felfer to one shot a lot of times down the floor because mm-hmm. he's grabbing that rebound. Yeah. They've not uh, been able to get the ball to him in, on the inside, though. He's no, not been able to score a field goal yet, but does have a couple free throws for Wayne City here at the half. But uh, has not been able to score. And the other big man, uh, looks like he may be injured. I don't know if he'll play second half. Yeah, we see him over there on the chair. He's the one that rolled his um, ankle there early in the second quarter, and he's been out ever since. And looks like he's got ice on it over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Justin Durham. So that makes the task even tougher as well. Yeah, so going to give up some size there with uh, Durham on the bench. Looks like probably the rest of the game. I don't s- see him uh, probably coming back Yeah. from that situation. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Fairfield's been getting some recognition by some of the Associated Press writers and some other pollsters around the state. They've got uh, rankings in the top ten in a couple different polls. And you can see why. Uh, you're seeing them play for the yeah. first time. They're 9-0 and on the year, and, and you can see with the – talent level they got and the depth that they got uh, why a lot of people feel like Fairfield is one of the top 10 teams in the state they have a good uh they've got it going on right now in all sports I believe at Fairfield High School you're right about that Uh, football program here has been uh football great for a long time volleyball is incredibly successful baseball is successful girls basketball team has been good oh yeah absolutely Um, I don't I don't uh, I mean I don't remember the last time Fairfield lost a conference football game (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and, well, or 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 didn't or did win the basketball conference. Yeah, either, it's right? well, seriously, it has been a long time, and I think a lot of that stems from the fact of not only they have good coaching staff and good athletes, but part of the reason they have those good athletes and so many of them, I think, is and we've talked about this many times before, is all the feeder schools yeah. that they have here in yeah. Wayne County, because you have four different grade schools, four different feeder schools, and particularly with basketball and volleyball, that makes a difference because. Uh, yeah, didn't. Uh, Fairfield pick up a, a Wayne City kid in the last couple of years because he wanted the opportunity to play football, and he also was a yes. very good basketball player. Right, right, they did. He has since graduated, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. He moved over here so he could play football yeah. and basketball. Yeah. That has certainly happened. But when I say feeder schools, I'm talking about sure. the four grade schools, of yeah. course, here in Wayne County that uh, feed into Fairfield Community High School. Yeah, you, don't want, you don't want uh, Wayne City to become a feeder school for Fairfield High School. No, so no, kids can play football. no, no, no. <laughs> and, you know, and the same thing with Cisney. I mean, I'm sure there's kids at Cisney and Wayne City that probably like to play football, yeah. you know, but at yeah. the uh, same time, uh, yeah, they don't, they're too small of schools to have football. But when you've got, um, when you've got great schools like uh, Center Street and Jeff and Jasper and New Hope that all feed into Fairfield High School, what you have on any given grade school night is you've got – Five kids starting at the grade school level in eighth grade, mm-hmm. okay, playing basketball. And you're doing that times four. So that means yeah. you've got 20 kids yeah. actively playing a lot of basketball mm-hmm. night after night right. at the grade school level and honing right. their skills and starting right. in that situation. And, and when so then a, when they get to high school, then they're extremely competitive at the freshman level. Exactly. And when you get a program started like uh, and have all the success that they've had here at Fairfield, those, those young mm-hmm. kids at those feeder schools, uh, that, that, that's what they want to be when they when they mm-hmm. get in high school. They want to be a Fairfield Mule. They want to mm-hmm. play basketball for Fairfield. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it's not just the boys. It's also the girls. Well, you got true. the same thing going on with the girls in the feeder program with the girls, and not just in basketball, but also in volleyball. Yeah. You know, Chet Snyder's done a tremendous job with the volleyball program here at uh, Fairfield, and they're going to be very good again this year. And uh, I understand they've got a freshman coming in this year that's an unbelievable volleyball player. I can't yeah. wait to see her play. They say she might be end up being one of the better ones to come through here. Yeah. And they've had a lot of great volleyball players at Fairfield who have gone on and played volleyball at the next level. All right. So, you know, again, Chet doing a great job with the uh, volleyball program here at Fairfield. But, again, those feeder schools feeding into All Fairfield right. Community High School, you've got a lot of experienced girls who have played volleyball. And they're not having to be taught, you know, from the – from the very beginning, right. like you do at some schools, uh, who don't have a grade school program much or whatever, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that makes a makes a huge difference. And same way with the girls' basketball. So when Coach Tanya Conrad gets a hold of them and they get here, uh, you've got girls that have had uh, you know some experience at these other feeder schools, and certainly makes a difference. Yep. Players are coming back out on the court to uh, warm up here for the second half, and we'll come back and bring you the second half action from the Mule Barn in just a moment. The difference between profit and loss is razor thin in today's market. Luckily, your GSI dealer is there to help you stay in the black. Capturing futures carry and improving your basis with increased on-farm storage on average could earn a 50 cent per bushel difference. Taking advantage of early harvest and saving with on-farm drying makes a profitability difference. 
proven and dependable grain systems that boost your bottom line, that's the GSI difference. As a craftsman, Gordy had imagination and vision. As a business owner and machinist, he understood all the moving components and how important they were to making things work. When he dreamed of building his business, he knew he needed help. FNB provided the spark necessary to ignite his growth. That partnership has proven to be his best creation yet. Back here at the Mule Barn, halftime, getting ready to start second half. Randy Olson along with Ron Standard, longtime basketball official. Fairfield leading it by 19 here at the half. You've been into a lot of high school gymnasiums in Southern Illinois refereeing basketball games. Give me some of your thoughts and memories on some of your favorite places to referee a basketball game. <laughs> well, um, this may not be in the right order right off the top of my head, but well, that's El all right. El Dorado does come to mind. Sure. Uh, Kingston. Duff Kingston Gym yep, in uh, El Dorado. Bet. Sure. Um, great atmosphere during that tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly all local teams, and mm -hmm. you can uh, uh, you, you can go down there for a game at 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, and a place would be 75 percent full. Right. Just a great atmosphere. Um, Got to put West Frankfurt up there. Oh yeah, Max uh, Morris Gym. Max Morris Gym. Cavernous uh, place. I, I got to work uh, those two super sectionals at West Frankfurt oh, when cool. they when they were renovating the arena, and they. They brought in extra bleachers, and, uh, I mm. mean, there's just no place to sit in there. just an electric atmosphere. Wow, I can't imagine that uh, place being that full because yeah, that's a big, big place. Yeah, pre pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, work uh, any games at B.E. Gum Gym in Salem? Yeah, mm -hmm. worked at Salem. Okay. That, that's a unique unique gym. It is unique. Uh, Another big one. Yeah. What about some uh, of the smaller uh, cracker boxes? Did you have some <laughs> of the cracker boxes that you liked or not? Yeah, well, you know, the old uh, Wayne City before they built the oh, high yeah. school, they had a restraining yeah. restraining line at Wayne oh, City. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Refereeing with a restraining line. Yeah. All right, we're off and running second half action as the teams change in. If you just joined us, Wayne City's in the red uniforms. Turn around by Noah Cooper won't go. And rebound by the Mules, who are in their home whites. They throw it up ahead to Colin Massey. Also, if you just joined us, we'll tell you that the Mules made nine three-pointers. They were trying to do the alley-oop to Zerlini, but it wasn't there. Yeah. Nine three-pointers for Fairfield in the first half and four for Wayne City. So it's been hot shooting as Lewis another one. right on cue puts in another one. That's five three-pointers for Fairfield and four for Lewis. 40 to 24. From the elbow, Brandon Lane leaves it short. There's Lewis with the rebound. And he has the ball taken away from him. Zerlini's got it. Goes up for the shot, scores. Mules just took that one away from Lewis. And Zerlini got it and put it in off the window. Long three, Tash McKinney. <laughs> we may have a battle of the three-pointers uh, here. That had to be from 30 feet. That Randy. was out there. Six three-pointers for Wayne City. Nine for Fairfield. We've got two separate scores going on here, don't we? McElravey, or excuse me, that's Zerlini. Zerlini with another one. That's 10 for Fairfield. <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. It's raining threes in the mule barn. Noah Cooper inside scores. And that's what we talked about at halftime is that they hadn't been able to get the ball into yeah. Cooper to score on the block, and that's actually his first field goal of the game after getting a couple of free throws. Uh, that was the a good move half. there, nice footwork. It was a nice move. Looks like uh, Wayne City's in the zone right now as Zerlini puts it up and misses it. And rebound by Grant Lewis. Out to Taj McKinney. Lucas Snow has it now. Over to Jarrett Lewis. Back to McKinney. Trying to move that ball against that zone. You got to do it quickly to make the zone shift. There's McKinney. He's going to put one up. It's short. Rebound by the Mules. Brandon Lane takes it in strong and scores. Nice move. Right down the lane for Brandon Lane. Try to go inside to Cooper again, but Zerlini's there to steal it. Throws it ahead to Colin Massey, but he lost it out of bounds. And we're going to have timeout called by Wayne City. 
timeout on the court, and we'll take timeout as well and be back with more in just a moment from the Mule Barn. Houghton's Pizza House in McLeansboro has been serving up delicious pizza and sandwiches since 1978. That's over 40 years. It's great food at a great price. You can choose from their specialty pizza, such as veggie pizza, taco pizza, supreme pizza, or create your own pizza masterpiece and choose from the toppings that you like. Dick and Lucille and their staff are ready to serve you Tuesday through Sunday from 4 p.m. till 10 p.m. at Alton's Pizza House. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Alton's Pizza House, a Southern Illinois tradition since 1978. Back here at the Mule Barn, Fairfield leading it, 47 to 29. Actually, uh, both teams played to a 9-9 tie in that second quarter because the Mules led by nine after one and led by uh, uh, nine after that. And but they're extending that lead out now. And here comes that uh, zone trap again. And falling down is McKinney. Gets, a gets away with it to no. I'll skip pass over to Lewis. He'll fire the three. Won't go this time. There's Noah Cooper with the rebound and sticks it back, but oh. it won't go. Missed it point blank that time. I think he was worried about it getting rejected. Zerlini for three. Won't go. Lewis with the rebound, and it's... Knocked off of him by McElravey. And now they call the mask timeout with 4.53 left here. In the third quarter play and back with more in just a moment on areasports.net. Renshaw Title and Abstract has been purchased by Olson and Reeves, attorneys at law, and has reopened under its new name, Mount Vernon Title Company. Through the resources of Olson and Reeves, Mount Vernon Title Company offers title insurance and title examinations for residential and commercial properties, as well as deed preparation, closing, signings, and escrow services. If you're involved in a real estate transaction, depend on Mount Vernon Title Company at 1015 Broadway, downtown Mount Vernon. You can call them at 316-7322. That's 316-7322. So, Ron, we were talking about some of your favorite gems. We talked about some big gems. What about some of those little gems that you uh, that you liked refereeing in? Can you think of any more of those? Well, they built a new school, too, but Crab Orchard used to be. looked like an old airplane. Oh, hangar. yeah, in the old gym. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, Thompsonville at one time in their old gym, they had just a high school gym with two half lines. That's how small it was. Oh, boy. Yeah. That made it made a little extra work for you guys <laughs> in the red, in the, in, the, in the black and white stripes, didn't it? Here's Brandon Lane with a short eight-footer and knocks it down. Good out-of-bounds play by the Mules. And again, they set up that zone trap. Let's see how Wayne City plays it. Over to Lucas Knoll. Lewis inside to Cooper. Cooper works on Zerlini and scores. And Noah Cooper being a little bit more assertive here in the second half. Must have uh, had a little conversation with the coach at halftime, perhaps, you think? Wayne City stays in the zone. Here is McElravey for three and left it short. Rebound by Wayne City ahead to Taj McKinney, and blocking foul is going to be called. Did that shot go in? I yes, it, it did. And they're going to count it. Yeah. So when you uh, made those continuation calls, you know, where the count, where the uh, shot counts like that, did did you did you enjoy that? Is that one of your favorite calls? Is like pumping your fist and saying, "Yeah, it, count it, the bucket." Yeah. It, it is, and, and it's a lot more fun when there's a full house, you know. Oh yeah, because everybody gets loud. Oh yeah. Roars, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yep. Here's uh, Robbins on the other end. Camden Robbins got down the court quickly and scored. 51-34. Again, Fairfield in the zone. Here's Lewis to McKinney. Looking inside for Cooper again. Can't find him. No, he's got it now. McKinney. Turns on his man and missed the shot. Goes out of bounds. Going to be along to Fairfield. Were you ever in a situation, I'm sure you were, where you were a referee in a high-pressure, high-powered game, gym's packed, maybe it's postseason, I don't know, and it gets so loud out there that your own ears were ringing and it was hard for you to hear? Yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes you couldn't hear the whistle. Wow, couldn't hear your own whistle. Yep. Wow, so you didn't know if you blew it or not. You got to blow <laughs> it again or what? 
That's blown again. Yeah. Double dribble. Turnover back to Wayne City. Yeah, nothing better than a packed house in postseason. And, you know, on every call that the official makes, half the gym loves it and half the gym exactly. hates it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you make a lot of friends and a lot of enemies in the same half, night, half right? Half of them think you're a genius and yeah. half think you're an idiot. Right, right. Taj McKinney misses the three-pointer. Rebound by Rogers for the Mules. Ahead to Robbins. Now out to Rogers again. Dylan Best has it. The key, the key to officiating, Randy, is just start out perfect and get better as the game goes on. I <laughs> yeah, love it. That's all there is to it. Tash McKinney with a little jumper. Yeah. Well, let's be honest. I mean, you did this for 30 years. You had to have pretty thick skin. Now, you did. Yeah. You, you had to have thick skin. You cannot skin. have what I call rabbit ears in referee uh -huh. basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you've got to just tune out the people that Lock are cat, that cat calling you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably a lot easier said than done. Yeah. Sure it is. Yeah. It'll be Wayne City Balls that's knocked out by the Mules. 2.25 to go here, third quarter. Profanity was about was the one thing that would get my attention. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you didn't want them to call your mom names. <laughs> yeah. leave, leave my mom out of it. Yeah. When they bring mom in, that's it. It's technical <laughs> foul, ejection, you're out of here. Don't be talking about mom. Uh, come on now. Yeah. McKinney to Lewis. McKinney's got it again. Pump fakes. Goes up for the shot and won't go, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Yeah, McKinney's uh, quite an athlete, and if you would have seen him last year, and then see him this year, Ron, you wouldn't believe that it's the same person. Really? He got in the weight room and just bulked up like you wouldn't believe and compared to what junior? he was. Yes, he's a junior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, after the first game this year I did at Wayne City, I stopped him in the hallway and I said, Tash, man, you've been in the <laughs> weight room. You've been in the weight room, haven't you? He goes, yeah, I love it in there, man. I love it. It's what my favorite thing to do. It's exactly what he said. And uh, you can tell. He has spent a lot of time in there. He gets the ball and takes it in. No good. Tipped it back up. No good. Robbins with the rebound and goes out of bounds. Belongs to Wayne City. Fresh five coming in for Fairfield. Again, they're running those fresh legs and bodies at you. And that, again, wears you down. Minute 48 left here in the third quarter play. As uh, you got McElravey and um, Massey back in there. Actually, all the original starters. Pruitt's got it in the corner. Goes into lane. Nice pass. Good pass down to Zerlini, and he's fouled. Yeah, that interior passing between uh, Lane and Zerlini has been good all season long for Fairfield, and you just saw a good example of it there. Stops the clock with a minute 36 left here in the third quarter. Landon is also the football quarterback here at Fairfield. Didn't know if you were aware of that. No. Mm -hmm. No, I imagine he doesn't have any problems seeing over the no, defense. No, no. With his wow. size, he can do that. He can he can throw the ball pretty good and see over that defense. Yep. You bet. So, what's his aspirations, uh, football or, or uh, basketball? You know what? I, I, he could probably do either, but I think he likes basketball a little bit more than yeah. football. Yeah. As far as playing at the next level. But time will tell. Here's Pruitt, Another good it to McElravey, yeah. and McElravey scores. Mules clicking on all cylinders now with a minute nine left. Here in the third quarter, they uh, easily beat Johnson City last night, had a running clock on the Indians last night, but they were playing without Austin Brown. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Austin Brown is a talented athlete who's a D1 football player yeah. from uh, – He's quarterback Johnson too, City. right? He is also quarterback, and he has actually had an offer from Wisconsin, Wisconsin Badgers, the Big Ten. Wow. That's a pretty big-time offer. And he's just a junior? Is that he's right? just a junior, yeah. So uh, here's Lewis from the corner. Won't go. And Noah Cooper gets it back, sticks it in the hole. Nice tip by the Indians that time. They're staying with it. They're not backing down. Cuts the lead back to 15. Massey for three. Won't go. Lewis has it. To McKinney. McKinney going to stop and pop the 15-footer. Got it. Well, that's something for a conference. Uh, Black Gomman have two athletes like that, a quarterback. 
Yeah, you know what? You're right about that. Playing at the same time. You're right about that. That is uh, pretty rare to have uh, two outstanding quarterbacks like that at the same time. And both good basketball players as well. Yeah. As the uh, running shot is up and in by McElravey, and he's fouled. They'll count that bucket. And that'll stop the clock with 14 seconds to play. They got those points back up on the board again, if that helps you. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I get yeah. a chance off. Yeah. I'll yeah. look into that. As uh, McElravey is good on the free throw. Yeah, we missed two points in our book here somewhere. We're trying to detect it. So we'll... Try to figure it out here in a minute. Who that two points went to. Here's Lucas Snow for three, and it won't go, and that's the horn to end the third quarter play. Our score is Fairfield 58 and Wayne City 42, and we'll come back with the fourth and final quarter in just a moment on areasports.net. It's the heating season, and Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods has you covered with fast, reliable propane delivery service for your home or farm. And if you need those propane bottles filled for your grill or camper, Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods can do it. Looking for a wide selection of guns and ammunition? You'll find it at Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods. You can even search online through their website at WayneWhitePropane.com. And don't forget, they also sell propane... Whether you're being cautious by staying close to home or life has just been a little too busy, you can still take advantage of the unique products and services we've designed with you in mind. You can now open and apply for a variety of checking accounts online and receive the benefits that come along with them, including high interest or cash back with a moolah account, protection beyond your bank account with Secure Plus, online and mobile banking, and local customer and community service. Simply visit us at fnbcommunitybank.com. FNB Banking Business Life. Member FDIC. All right, we're ready for a fourth quarter action. We found our missed two points, too. It's uh, Landon Zerlini. He's actually got uh, 17 in the game right now instead of a 15. Yep. So yeah. we figured it out. All right. Fairfield has the ball first to start this fourth and final quarter as Wayne City stays in the zone. Here's a drive by Pruitt. He left it short. Rebound by uh, Noah Cooper for the Wayne City Indians. McElravey uh, currently leads Fairfield in scoring with 21 points in the game. Here's a long three by McKinney. It's short. That was way out there. Yeah, 30 foot. Way, way mm. out there. Volleyball line mm. shot that time. McElravey out to Zerlini. Yo, no. Won't go. Try it again. Try it again. Oh. Off the rim again. This time he gets rebound. rebound. Yep. Cooper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we were keeping rebounds, uh, He's got a ton of them. He's got at least a dozen, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And he's been scoring here in the second half, too. Getting the ball down there on the block. Yeah, he had six points in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Wayne City ball as Tash McKinney has mm -hmm. it to Lewis. Down to Cooper. Good Cooper pass. spins on his man. In and out, no good. Rebound gathered in there by Pruitt. Down to Zerlini, and he scores. Yeah, another unselfish play there by the Mules. Looking for the open man. 19 for Zerlini now. Mules still in that zone trap. Wayne City trying to handle it. Over to Lucas Knoll. And a shot from the corner from Lewis. He hits another three. He's had a bunch of them today. Yeah, he got five. Yeah, cuts it back to 15. Five three-pointers for Jarrett Lewis. On the other end, here's Brandon Lane, misses it. Another rebound by Noah Cooper. <clears throat> Out to Taj McKinney. McKinney on the jumper is fouled, and he'll go to the line. You know, a lot of people don't understand sometimes how important those rebounds are during a game, even the defensive rebounds that Cooper's had. You know, if he doesn't get those 12 or 13 rebounds that he's got so far, then this is a uh, – yeah, thirty or forty point game. Exactly, you know? because mm -hmm. maybe a Fairfield player is grabbing it and sticking it back in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, free throws are good for McKinney, and uh, hey, this is a thirteen point game. Six minutes to go. Wayne yeah, City hanging around. Hanging around is right. Wayne City hanging around. Yeah, I know. Win or lose, it's been a good effort for the Indians. Absolutely. A great experience for them. 
Knocked away and gathered by Noah Cooper. He gets a steal that time. I figured it would be playing, you know, Wayne County rival and mm -hmm. chance to beat a bigger school. Yep. Fairfield's really only had two close games so far this year. Lost, or I mean, uh, beat Salem by two and beat Flora by three. And that's really the only two close games that they've mm -hmm. had. So. Yeah, I noticed neither one of them are conference opponents. No, they, no They're owning the conference. Yeah, no, you're right. McKinney with an odd angle, misses it. There's Noah Cooper, pump fakes, right. has the ball stripped from him. McElravey took it away from him. Gets it in the corner to Colin Massey, misses a shot. There's a weak side rebound by Lewis. Out to McKinney again, 5.15 left in the game. Good McKinney pass. down the lane, good pass. Down uh, underneath to uh, Lewis, but couldn't shoot. Back it goes to McKinney, he'll elevate. Won't go. Ahead to Brandon Lane again. We're getting close to our mask timeout, as Pruitt has it. Out to Lane. Now Colin Massey. Skip passes it over to McElravey. Back to Massey, inside to uh, Brandon Lane. The under move is good. A little underhanded yeah. shot. Nice move. Puts the mules up by 15 at the 440 mark, and it gives us our mask timeout for this fourth and final quarter. So we'll be back with more in just a moment. Vopel Home Furnishings has been serving the area for nearly 30 years with quality furniture, appliances, and bedding. Their goal at Vopel Home Furnishings is to give you a great selection of home furnishings, appliances, and bedding at a great price with outstanding hometown customer service. If you're in the market for new or updated furniture, appliances, or bedding, Check out the selection at Vopel's, 103 East Main Street on the south side of the square in McLeansboro. And visit their website at vopelhomefurnishings.com. Back at the Mule Barn, uh, Ron, you and I were talking a little bit about girls basketball earlier. You talk about a, a team that's got a, a good girls team this year, Mount Vernon Lady Rams. They're still unbeaten. I had not heard that. Yeah, and they're beating Carbondale right now, 33-16. to 16. Wow. Yeah. Now, was it last year they won a regional? They won a regional last year at Olney, and a lot of those girls back. I think they lost two to graduation, but okay. the rest of the team is back. And, uh, no, he's got a talented team this year, Jeff Bonin does. And that's good. Yeah, they uh, – they, Went on the road and beat uh, Goreville to start the season. Uh, I think they've got a win against uh, Massac County and and they Those beat, are good girls Centralia. Yeah. yeah. So uh, are they young or? Uh, yeah, a couple of seniors, <coughs> but other than that, I think yeah, juniors and sophomores. But uh, yeah, uh, good girls program this year at Mount Vernon. All right, here we go. After the timeout, Wayne City with the basketball. Yeah, Woodlawn's got a girls, good girls program, too. Really? For that matter, yeah. Uh, Coach Patterson having a great season over there. Did they used to have to co-op to have a girls team or Woodlawn? Woodlawn and who? I, I don't uh, know. I don't I, think I don't think they so. They never did have um, to. It, it was Sesser and Waltonville that co-op yeah, for girls. Yeah, Sesser and Waltonville, yeah. Foul on the Mules is going to send um, Taj McKinney to the line. Yeah, foul on Zerlini is his second. Stops the clock with 4.15 to go in the ball game, and free throw is missed by McKinney. Camden Robbins back in the game for the Mules, along with Eric Rogers. There's a guy who can jump out of the gym. You saw him in the pregame. Oh, yeah, I did. Camden yeah. Robbins, yeah. Easy dunks. Yeah. Free throw is missed. McKinney missed them both that time after yeah, making Yeah, that's his earlier. first misses from the free throw line. Uh -huh. Legs might be getting tired. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Sure enough. Colin Massey directing traffic out there over to McElravey. Inside to Camden Robbins. Good shooter short from the free throw line fourth quarter. That's usually the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. Massey inside the lane. Nope, won't go. Lewis with the rebound. Tries to get rid of it. It's taken away from him. To Zerlini and reverse layup he scores. Wow. Nice move by Landon after the steal. 64-47. Behind the back dribble by Tash McKinney, and he's fouled. That's on uh, McElravey. That'll be his second. That is uh, five team fouls, so not yet in the bonus. Here's Noah Cooper going up, and he is fouled by Zerlini. That'll be three on Landon. Going to the line be Noah Cooper. He made a couple there earlier in the game, didn't he? Two for two? Yes, he did. Well, 
Let's see what he does this trip. 3.29 to go in the game. And he makes it. Uh, next one put him in double figures. And plus a ton of rebounds. So double-double for this kid if he makes this free throw. Short. McElravey brings it up for the Mules. Wayne City is still in the zone. They look down underneath to Camden Robbins. Can't shoot it. Back out to Massey. He'll fire away. Missed it. Tipped around and grabbed out of there by Tash McKinney for the Indians. He'll motor to the other end. Loses it. Knocked away from behind. McElravey with it. Dunk. Here Throws we go. it ahead. Yes, you <laughs> called it. Right on cue. A flush by Landon Zerlini. You saw that coming, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. See, you, this is your broadcasting debut, and you still saw it coming. Uh, yeah. You referees must have saw that coming. Is that what it was? Yeah. Even the referees saw it coming. All right, yeah. Jarrett Lewis misses it. And a push-off that time, I guess. You know, they always said the greatest compliment you can get as an official if a coach comes up to you after the game and says, I didn't even know you were out there. Yep, that is a great compliment. That's the best you can ha yeah, ask for. That's the best thing you can get. Yeah, yeah. just try to go unnoticed and mm -hmm. do your job. Long three as uh, yeah, McElravey is knocked down. going to shoot three. By Jarrett Lewis. And that'll send McElravey to the line. I think that uh, might have been a little bit of a retaliatory foul. <laughs> And I think that uh, he is being talked to over at the <laughs> sideline by coaching staff. Yeah. McElravey good on the free throw. Makes the second one. Substitutions coming in for Wayne City at the 234 mark. Let's see if we can identify these guys for you. Anderson is in there. I, I could have missed one, Randy, but I still don't have Fairfield missing a free throw yet in this game. Riston Kell also in the game. Uh, that's pretty impressive free throw shooting. Yeah. Another one for McElravey. Got it. There it is. Well, they shot him real well last night, too, against Johnson City. Yeah. Uh, McGuire Taylor back in for Fairfield. Also, Lucas Halbert in the game. They also have Eric Rogers out there, uh, Dylan Best, and Camden Robbins. As the ball goes out of bounds by the Indians. That's a veteran team led by all these seniors and uh -huh. know how important those free throws are. Yeah. Kobe Anderson also in the game for Wayne City right now. And um, Ivy is back out there as well. 2.18 to play. Mules go inside. Camden Robbins, he'll put up the turnaround. No good. Slapped around. Goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Wayne City basketball. Bringing it up will be Riston Kell. Kell looks to get rid of it. Picked up his dribble, and he's going to be bailed out on the timeout. Timeout with a minute 59 left. And we'll take a brief time out. Be back with more from the Mule Barn in a moment. This broadcast is made possible by Barnard Soil Service, located in Wayne City, offering multiple services to the farming community, including crop input recommendations, custom application, field records, seed test plots, seed treatment, soil testing, and much more. Barnard Soil Service is located at 303 East Smith Street in Wayne City, and their phone number is 895-2116. Additional details available on the company website at barnards.com. Barnard Soil Service in Wayne City. So you said you haven't been to any basketball games this year, and largely because uh, fans aren't allowed, right? Yeah, so that's it. you just been watching some online like uh, everybody yeah. else? Yeah. yeah. Riston Kell has it for the Indians. He falls down, and here's a breakaway and a layup up and good by McGuire Taylor. I don't know if he had a slick spot on the floor there or what. As Taylor knocks it away to Rogers, he'll go in and score. And Rick Rogers takes it to the house. 73-48. Minute 27 left. 
Yeah, they, they wore them down, Randy. Just a short yeah. time ago, Wayne City had the ball, and if yeah. they scored uh, three, they'd have had a 10-point ball game. Right. Habermas with the ball right now and tries to get rid of it over to Kell and throws it away. Habermas, Anderson, Ivy, Kell all out there for Wayne City. Um, and also, yeah, I see if I'm thinking I'm missing anybody or not. Uh, I think we got them all in there. Okay. Halbert with it for Fairfield. Uh, in the corner with it is Blaine Milner, who's in there now. And there's a shot put up by Easton, and he misses it. And uh, they call the foul? I guess not. One minute to play. Triggering it in will be Regan Taylor, who's in there for the Mules. In the corner goes to Halbert. Missed the shot. Luke Duckworth with the rebound. Stuck it back up and in. A bucket for Luke Duckworth. He's a big sophomore, uh, Ron, that um, has gotten really a, a lot better and plays a lot yeah. of JV minutes, and he's going to be the big man of the future for this yeah. Mules team. How tall is he? He is listed at 6'4". Yeah? Mm-hmm. So he may grow some. Yeah, yeah. And he's got uh, – I bet he's on the football team. Pretty good sized body on. I was wondering if he was playing football. I, I've been meaning to ask um, Coach Justin Townsend whether or not he's playing football. He's got the football body for sure. Oh, man, he'd make a good tight end. Yeah. 31 seconds left. Mules have it out there with Regan Taylor, and they may just hold on to it as Nick Easton has it. He's going to hold the ball on his hip. This might be the ball game. Wayne City content to let him do it and we'll run it down. It'll be 15 seconds left. This is going to be the final score, 75 to 48. Game was a lot closer than the final score. In yeah, case. it was. Um, last couple of minutes here, Fairfield's run it up a little bit, but uh, good effort by Wayne City this afternoon. But just too much firepower for the Fairfield Mules. They are the uh, the champs of Wayne County this year. As they've beaten both Sisney and Wayne City this year. Uh, so Fairfield wins at 75 to 48. And um, improved to 10 and 0 on the season. Ron is working on our post game stats. We'll come back and take a look at those in just a minute, so stay with us. Do your best friend a favor. Take them to Jagger's Doggy Daycare in Mount Vernon. One stop for dog boarding. Don't leave them home alone or trust them with someone you don't even trust. Pamper them with the Doggy Daycare. They do grooming, training, and your doggy will love the sweet treats dog barkery. <clears throat> a bakery. Spoiling your pooch seven days a week. Jagger's Doggy Daycare. Dog grooming, training, and boarding. 414 Main Street in Mount Vernon. Find them on Facebook or at jaggersdoggydaycare.com. In today's environment, being able to do all of your banking from home is not only convenient, but a necessity. People's National Bank makes it easy for you to do your banking without actually going to the bank. From online banking, mobile banking, free mobile deposit, to transferring funds and paying bills, it's easy and convenient for you to do your banking all from your mobile phone or computer. Get started by going to peoplesnationalbank.com to sign up for online banking today. People's National Bank, making it easy to bank from anywhere. Member FDIC. Back here at the Mule Barn, the Mules led it 40-21 to 21 at the half. Uh, Wayne City got it back to within uh, 13 points, I think, there early in the fourth quarter. But, uh, Fairfield pulls away and wears down the Indians and uh, cruised a victory here by a score of 75-48. to 48. That is the final. Again, no JV contest today. It was just a strictly a varsity-only game in the Mule Barn. But Fairfield improves to 10-0 and 0 on the season. I don't have the total record for Wayne City in front of me, but I think it's in the neighborhood of 4-4, uh, four and four, something like that. Uh, I'll, I do know that Wayne City is unbeaten in the Midland Trail Conference, though, just like the Mules are unbeaten in the Black Diamond Conference. Uh, Ron Standard, longtime basketball official, has been uh, working the game with me here. He uh, spent 30 years wearing the, uh, <laughs> the pinstripes out there and uh, getting a little bit different viewpoint and vantage point today. And uh, uh, yeah. you've totaled up some points for us. So what do you got? What's the final stats look I like have. there? Okay, I don't know how accurate this is, but it's pretty close. But uh, I like that. So the referee said, well, that's pretty close. <laughs> that's close enough. That's close enough. Yeah, yeah. I made that call. It's yeah. close enough. Yeah. yeah. You can't get by telling like a coach that. that. It's close enough. Um, coach's son, Noah McElravey, has 23 points. Mm -hmm. uh, included in that 23 points was um, five three-pointers. Yeah. And he was four for four from the free throw line. I, I don't have Fairfield missing a free throw, Randy, in the whole yeah, game. That's good. Uh, Brandon Lane had 12 points. <clears throat> he was four for four from the free throw line. Colin Massey had six. 
Landon Zerlini had 24 points, so you got 47 points between McElroy and Zerlini today. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zerlini, 5 for 5 from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, no missed free throws for Fairfield. Taylor McGuire had a field goal for 2. Eric Rogers, 2 field goals for 4. Camden Robbins had mm -hmm. a field yep. goal for two, and Luke Duckworth got a field goal for two. So the total number of three pointers for Fairfield. Yeah, let's one. see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess they didn't make ten, one in ten, the star second ten, half. Ten, I guess. Is I'll it ten? Ten. Okay. Yeah. Ten. Ten, ten three pointers for the Mules. Yep. All right. Pretty good. For uh, Wayne City, um, Wayne City only had four players <clears throat> break the scoring column. And Taj McKinney led uh, all scores with 23, so he had almost half their points. And uh, mm -hmm. Jarrett Lewis made five threes for 15 points. Uh, Lucas Snow had a free throw for one, and Noah Cooper had uh, nine points and a ton of rebounds. Yeah, he so. did. And, and Cooper uh, finally started scoring there on the inside in the second half. They, they held him without a field goal in the first half. Exactly. I had he, seven of his nine points in the second half, and, yeah. he, and he missed that last free throw. He'd mm -hmm. had a double-double. Yeah, but he got going there uh, in that third quarter and yeah, but. put in some big buckets for him. And uh, like you said, he had a ton of rebounds. We don't know for sure how many, but we know at least a dozen. So that was, uh, that was huge for Wayne City's yeah, effort so this afternoon. Kept them in the game for a while there. About yeah. 17 total three-pointers made in this game. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, 10 for Fairfield and 7 for Wayne City. Yeah. So that's the final here from the Mule Barn. Fairfield wins at 75-48. They improved to 10-0 on the season. Ron, it's been uh, real fun. Thanks for joining this, us today. This, yeah, this was a lot of fun, Randy. Thank see, you for having see, me. And you thought it was going to be hard. See, it's just <laughs> We're just talking basketball, man. It's fun, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, it's a stat thing I was worried about. Ah, I, I can no, talk basketball. No, but no, that's all right. It's all right. <laughs> no, it's been fun having you, and great to have your perspective on it, too, from an official's point of view. That's always great. Yeah. And uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, that'd be All great. Right. Okay, be great. very good. Well, for Ron Standard, I'm Randy Olson saying thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And the final again, Fairfield wins it over Wayne City 75-48. to 48. So long from the Mule Barn.